Welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, we begin today with a roundup of a lot of action from Northwest Arkansas. I caught up with Paul Gatling, editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal for a recap. Joining me now, Paul Gatling. He's the editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. We're talking about all things Northwest Arkansas. Really a lot of Walmart news this week, uh, these last two weeks. Paul, good to see you. Let's begin with Walmart's earnings come out. It's a pretty good earnings report there. Uh, sales up, profits up, it all looks good. Yeah, I think Tuesday was a good day for Walmart. Uh, a lot of different revenue streams contributing to the growth. You know, the Vizio deal that they announced earlier this year, bolstering the advertising business. I think one of the uh, interesting takeaways I had was from the chief financial officer, John David Rainey, who pointed out that uh, uh, the high inflation and the high cost of uh, going out to eat and, and fast food is, is perhaps driving more customers to their grocery aisle. You know, the grocery uh, uh, segment of Walmart was uh, was really good. But yeah, like you said, I think a little over $5 million in profit and 160 some odd dollars in, in sales. So Tuesday was a was a good day for uh, for Walmart. Yet uh, as we speak, there are uh, a lot of re there's a lot of corporate restructuring going on. We also broke a story about the fact that uh, there are a lot of folks being laid off in certain divisions of Walmart in terms of management, and they're being asked to return to some corporate offices versus work remotely. What's the gist of what Walmart's doing and why? Well, uh, a couple of things. One, you know, the, we're a uh, few years removed from the COVID pandemic and, and working remotely and having a choice of where to work and that sort of thing, but Walmart has moved back to you know, I think it was a couple of years ago, February of 2022, they started making more of a push of, of returning to work and following a corporate trend of, of large corporations of uh, getting their people back into the office and back together. Uh, another thing I think is at play is that, you know, Walmart is investing over a billion dollars to build a uh, brand new world class 350 acre uh, corporate campus in Bentonville. So I think some of these move, not everybody is being recalled to Bentonville. I think there's some, I think it's Atlanta, Dallas, and Toronto where there are some smaller tech focused hubs. Those, those workers are uh, uh, being asked or invited to, to work at either the Bentonville home office, most of them in Northwest Arkansas, but Walmart also has corporate uh, uh, offices in San Francisco and on the East Coast in New Jersey. But yeah, Walmart's gonna have a nice new home office and I don't think they're building that to make that an option for people to work at on certain days. That's where they would like most of their people to work at. Donna Morris said it improves company culture, working together, sharing ideas together, that sort of thing. So yes, there is some restructuring. Unfortunately, there is, there is uh, several hundred job losses uh, that Walmart announced on Thursday as well. But uh, it's not the first time they've announced uh, uh, restructuring like this and, and probably won't be the last. Uh, but you've reported a little bit on that campus. There are some pretty interesting amenities going in there. Wright's Barbecue is one of them. Not everybody gets a Wright's Barbecue in their backyard of their corporate office there, but um, also a, a fitness center, a child care center, some other things. What are some things that are going to be on that campus that uh, will make it pretty remarkable? Yeah, a couple of the amenity buildings have already opened. Uh, earlier this year, you mentioned the Walton Whole Health Life and Fitness Center uh, is open. It's uh, anything that you can imagine that would be included in a uh, top tier fitness center in the year 2024, it is there. Any machine you can think of, any space you can think of, it's there. Uh, more recently, just a few weeks ago, they were opened up an on-campus child care facility, uh, which is, uh, I believe it'll be the largest I think I read the, uh, we reported the largest in the state, uh, which is going to have a ripple effect uh, in the child care facility uh, uh, bubble in Northwest Arkansas. That's going to that's going to open up more space in Walmart, which will in turn open up uh, theoretically open up more child care spaces in Northwest Arkansas. So, yeah, those two things are open. They're going to have a world class culinary experience, both for people who work there. And as you mentioned, uh, some public facing options, rice barbecue being one, coffee shops, uh, other restaurant options that we don't know about yet. But uh, those things are open. The office buildings, 
Uh, all that going to be coming online uh, next year. The Razorback Regional Greenway going to run through the campus. It's going to be a public involved campus. There will be people there that don't work at Walmart. So uh, all of this stuff uh, that we've reported on through the years going back to 2016, 2017 is uh, all finally beginning to take shape. I remember when uh, you broke the story, looking at some of the pieces of the puzzle for that campus and how it was coming together. That was a great uh, bit of journalism there. I, I hope you're still patting yourself on the back on that one. Uh, let's shift <laughs> our uh, attention. You sat down with Stuart Walton, uh, who's he and his brother Tom, who are grandsons of Walmart founder Sam Walton, have been making tremendous investments in Northwest Arkansas with bike trails and a lot of other uh, businesses and amenities. Uh, tell me a little bit about that interview with him. Where, where were y'all talking and kind of what were your, some of your big takeaways from that? Uh, Stuart and I were part of the agenda for the second annual Mid-Continent Venture Capital Summit, which was organized and hosted by Cortado Ventures, which is one of the largest of its kind, largest VC firms of its kind in Oklahoma. They had this inaugural event in Oklahoma City last year and for this year in the second year they wanted to bring that to Bentonville, uh, which kind of illustrates the growing uh, reputation and the growing level of sophistication that you have in, in Bentonville and Benton County when it comes to venture capital and private investment. Uh, over 370 people representing uh, 30 something states attended over one and a half trillion dollars of investable capital all put together from from these attendees and uh, uh, yeah like we were part of the agenda they wanted me to uh, I was asked to uh, have an interview with Stewart just to, to talk about his investing strategy both through uh, Runway Group uh, which is the co-founded and, and owned by he and his brother Tom which invests in the Bentonville Bella Vista area in a lot of different ways hospitality recreation and also through uh, their holding company RZC Investments which uh, uh, Tom and Stewart used to deploy capital into existing businesses. Um, he had some interest. We had some interesting uh, uh, back and forth about where what their strategy is, if they had a strategy, and when they started. He referenced the book by Richard Florida, uh, whose main uh, uh, topic was uh, companies will go to where the talent is and not other the other way around. So that was kind of their jumping off point of. I've really helped uh, wanting Bentonville and, and uh, the Benton County area to up its game, to attract talented people, to attract uh, talented workers to Northwest Arkansas, and uh, which would, you know, not just make Walmart more attractive uh, for for jobs, but other companies in the uh, in the ecosystem up here. So, we had a lot of fun. Um, I asked him. Uh, I, well, I asked him. I said, I'm not going to ask you what you're going to do with the current Walmart home office campus, but I would like to know what you. I uh, think the best use of that uh, uh, acreage, about 60 acres there at the corner of 8th and Walton will be as we go forward here in the next several years. So I don't think anybody seems to know if they know they're playing it close to the vest as usual. But uh, it was a fun conversation, had a great story. Uh, Jeff Delarosa reported on that at our at our website. So it's always it's always good to uh, visit with the Waltons and see what they're up to in Bentonville. All right, we got about 30 seconds left. One of the things that came out too, and you didn't mention that they are also invested in real estate holdings. They bought about 2,700 acres in Bella Vista too, and that's gonna be a huge project uh, uh, investment. It's a huge uh, turning point in the history of Bella Vista. When you talk about 2,700 acres and if you look at the history of the runway group and their previous investments, that's primarily outdoor recreation. You think of Bella Vista, you think of golf and maybe maybe retirement community, but that evolution has already started and, and uh, that evolution will continue with whatever uh, the Waltons and the runway group uh, have in plan uh, for the future of Bella Vista when it comes to outdoor recreation. All right, he's Paul Gatling. He is the editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. You can catch all of that stuff on our website at talkbusiness.net. You can certainly find it at all of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal links and properties and publications that we have. Paul, great work as always. Thank you so much for your time. All right, appreciate you. That's Paul Gatling, editor of the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal, our sister publication. You can catch more of our interview at talkbusiness.net. When we come back, we'll run through the top headlines of the last week and later in the show, meet your new house speaker. Brian Evans joins us right after this.